Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to today's equipment autopsy. Today we have this. This is an Ikigami TKC 970 color film camera. But it's not. Because when you read that you think it's a color film camera. But it's not. What it is, is a color video camera that shoots video of film. Kind of. Here's how it works. On the side over here is a glass plate and an aperture. And you project video, like you put a film projector here with, with film on it, and it projects into there. And then there's a camera, there's a beam splitter and three video cameras for red, green, and blue. And these are how this whole machine is how you convert film to video. It's all analog, old school tech. It has had a long and useful life, and it is now pretty much useless. It's too cool to just scrap out, so I wanted to take it apart. It's got a lot of the useful, usual stuff that we're used to seeing, like waveform monitors and you know basic card tech, but this bit really interests me and I wanted to take that apart and check it out. So that is the focus of our autopsy today. Oh wow, that's neat. All right, so we're not gonna take apart the whole thing, we're gonna focus just on this bit because the rest of it's just some cool buttons and switches and knobs and simple stuff that's like, oh hey look, a circuit board. That's a cool circuit board, but and no. That's, that's Dave's shtick. Dave can teach you all about the circuit board. I want to dig into this. I also kind of wonder where this goes. Oh, hey! I'll bet that goes right there. So, I got to get this thing out of the way. How about that? All right. Now, do you come out easy, or is it going to be a fight? Screwdriver. Take out that top rack while I'm at it. I'm going to unplug everything. We're going to get a lot of good cables and connectors out of this. That'll be nice. We can always use BNC fittings. Hey Batman, come grab this waveform monitor, which I think will just go right out the front. I think it's all disconnected. Oh, thank you, Bruce. Just pull it right on out. Thank you. All right, now. Yeah. Cool. Thank you.
Hey, Bruce. Can you come here a minute? I'm going to take out those screws, and I need you to catch this. It's going to fall. Like that. Trade me sides. Thank you, sir. It might fall just from taking out the bottom screw. You should have it. Cool. And let me just cut these. Thank you, sir. You're and I'm going to cut this off just for cleanliness as we go. Cool. Now we can see what we're doing here. And I am now sure this is the cover for that, which is a very nice cover with very nice latches. And I'm going to take that out before it eats my knees. What are you? Oh, it's actually useful. We'll keep that. So this is our camera. It's made by Canon. Which is funny because this has Ikigami all over it. But the camera itself is a Canon. Its type is Sierra Paul Bravo 21256. And its serial number is 202008. And this is beautiful. It's really neat. So, what I'm going to try and do is take this cover off so that you can see inside and we can trace out what's happening. All right, here we go. Like most cameras, it's a matte black box and a lot of empty space, but let's take a look at what's happening. The light comes in from here, and it hits that mirror, and that mirror, yeah. All right, so there's a lens set up here, which isn't going to work right because my camera is set to go like that, but this is designed to get an image with a very, very low dispersion that just hits that lens. And that bounces off this mirror gets focused through this aperture, through this disc, and into the lens. And this is the lens of the camera, which will go down into here. And I'm pretty sure right here we're going to find a beautiful beam splitting compass. But this now that's really interesting. This wheel has a line on it with a sharp, like it's tinted from here down and it's completely not tinted right there. And then it gets more and more and more and more and more tinted up to there. This is right now, pause this video, open up a new tab and go watch the engineer guy's video. So this is the link right here on how a film projector works. Go watch that, because you need to know that to understand what's happening here. Okay, the engineer guy is awesome. He makes way better videos than I ever will. I love this guy, but go watch that. I'll wait. All right, now that you understand what's going on, remember the wheel, the, the shutter wheel that spins around and blocks out while the film is moving? Okay, now that you know that, this 
is the exact counterpart to that. This is working with the blanking interval. At least that's what I think. I could be wrong, and if you know better, by all means, teach me. But I think this wheel is doing, is, is fading that out so that this looks more continuous because we're going from film to video. And on top of that, film is usually at 24 frames. Video is usually at 30 or 29.97 and all that simpty stuff. But this is probably a 30 frame per second video camera trying to convert film at 24 frames. So it's got to like fuzzy the edges a little bit. And I think the way it's doing that is with this wheel. I think that's really important. And I'll bet that wheel is designed to run synchronous off this motor, which will not be just a plain old like DC motor. This is, this is going to have stuff going on. There's sync stuff happening. It's probably controlled down here in this stuff. All right, so we've got that figured out. Now let's look in here. This is, this is going to be neat. So what do you think is in there? I think this is going to be a big prism beam splitter setup, very similar to when we did the camera autopsy, except way bigger. That's what I think we're going to find. Let's find out. There might also be a little bit of a lens there, because we've got that, that input lens. All right, moment of truth. Ha! Look at that. That is a big beam splitting prism. I don't know what this is. Maybe a temperature sensor? I'm not sure. And then we go out into our other optics, and these look like carriers where you can slip in a filter. And then these are the actual camera modules for red, green, and blue. But that is a big, giant, beautiful beam splitter. And I think I might even be able to get it out intact. So I'm going to unplug that. I'm going to delicately cut the two wires to the sensor. Very carefully remove this. Now, let's see what we have here. We've got, that's our input there. And it's got a really cool filter on it. And the filter, I didn't bend anything taking it out. You saw I was really careful. This is, and it isn't just like kicked out. It curves back in like that. I have no idea why, but I'm really interested in learning more about it. And then we've got the red side. You can see this is red, the green side, and the blue side. And if I shine a flashlight in here, you'll see it separated out by colors. So this will look blue, and that'll look green, and that'll look red. And that's so beautiful. The amount of science and engineering that goes into making a color separator like that is just, just blows my mind. That's really beautiful. And that is going to be an amazing demo down in our laser lab. So you'll get to come and play with this if you want. So I'm going to set this up here. No, I'm going to set it way over here on the big stable box so it doesn't get beat up. Now there's, there's some really cool stuff happening back here. I'm going to start with the cameras though. My favorite color is blue, so we'll start with blue. And maybe I can just pop it right out with just two big bolts. All these other ones are adjustments. This one is lock, rotation, and tracking. But these two, uh, two hands in there. Captive bolts. Maybe this will just come right out. 
I got it. All right. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, bonus, bonus, bonus. Let me unplug this. Check this out. This is so cool. All right, so this is the part you see, right? And it says, loosen the coil lock knob before the adjustment of coil rotation and or focus tracking. Okay. And we've got things here for calibration, gain, high frequency, low frequency, and then an output. This little box here is a preamplifier. And this here is a coil assembly. But here's the cool part. It's a tube! And I think, I could be wrong, I think it's a photomultiplier tube. It's, it's a tube type camera. It's not solid state. This is old school. It's older than I thought it was. It's a tube type camera. And I might, if I'm really careful, There are people watching this right now that are just in tears. You've screwed it up forever. It'll never be the same. I did that the minute I picked up a screwdriver, and you know it. And if you don't, you haven't watched enough of my videos. I want to get that out so I can show you the camera. So let's see what we can see. just goes around because hmm. I can move it the whole tube will spin but it won't come out I'm gonna take off what I can Okay, so this is a little gear adjust. Okay, so that gets the outer cap off. That looks like PMT. Now, I don't know much about photomultiplier tubes, so if this is a different type of tube or something, I'm sorry. Because the only ones even close to this that I've ever dealt with are a plain old classic photomultiplier tube. And they look like this. But with any luck, I'll be able to get all the way down in there and extract the tube. And we'll get a number off the side of it. And then we can figure that out. We can learn together. Now you may be watching this thinking, how's he ever going to get it back together with all the screws out? Well, the cool thing is, there's a lot of really smart, talented people that are shooting video of me doing this. So if I do take it apart, and I do decide I want to put it back together for some reason, I can just watch the video and learn what screw went where. So if you're ever taking something apart, and maybe you're not entirely sure that you know everything you need to know about what you're doing, shoot video of it as you take it apart. And then you'll be like, oh, that was plugged in there. And that's where that screw goes and all that stuff. It's really helpful. I got to open this up to get to the screw. No, I don't. That's the screw, and it sticks right out the top. If I can put that back, there we go, okay. But you really, you wanna be like, there you go, okay. There you go. Grab that screwdriver. And 
now this should just unplug. Now we're down to the thing. So we take out this mount. You don't want to know what this thing had to have cost. Oh, man. If you've been following along on these videos, you know that I've taken a lot of things apart. and Sometimes you can just tell this cost a lot of money. It has that feel to it of this cost a lot of money. But this cost a lot of money. 30 years ago, and today has been surpassed by a digital version, which costs a lot of money, but which rendered this old thing very obsolete. At which point its value dropped like a rock to everybody but you and me who thinks this is cool. Ah, now it moves. Okay, it is a Toshiba 8507 Victor. And this is the tube. So this is just a tube with coils in it that have to do with alignment and stuff like that, but that is the tube. And it looks to me like a photomultiplier tube. Now this may be a specific PMT tuned to the red wavelengths, or the blue wavelengths, since this is blue. Yeah, this is blue. Because it's red on the end. That might just be a filter to keep out blue. So what I think this is, and commenters I'm sure will light it up and let us know for sure, is a photomultiplier tube, a high precision one, that's tuned specifically to the blue color spectrum. But that is where it all starts. So this takes a film image projected in up there. It bounces it off there, fix the, fixes the individual frame problem, goes through the lens, into the beam splitter, and into the photomultiplier tube, where it gets converted from just a picture into an electrical signal, analog, waveform, and then it gets some massaging through stuff, and it comes out as a regular, boring, modern, analog, standard, deaf video signal like we watched on television for a million years. So that is cool, and that is a beautiful piece of engineering, and I would like very much to see what we can do with this. So this might be a project for a geek group member around here. Maybe even you. I know Mr. Kidwell won't touch it because it's analog, and that gets him all freaked out. He's terrified of analog. But maybe you can. I'm curious. Comment in to let me know if you want to play with this, because if you do, you are welcome to come on over and check this out. I'll have all the important parts kept. And you can play with this and maybe make it do something interesting. I don't want to just convert film into video. That's, that's not very fun. But this is really neat, and I had fun, and I want to thank you for hanging out with me. As always, I'm Chris Bowden. You're not, and we'll see you next time. You guys have fun.